Hi everyone, welcome back to the next section of the workshop. Uh, my name is Shannon Smith. Uh, I did the ligand docking presentation. Um, now I'm going to be walking through the tutorial with you guys. Um, so here I have opened my terminal, so I'm going to be walking through each of the scripts with you guys today um, for you to follow along and ask questions along the way um, on any step that you might have. Um, a couple of notes before we get going. Um, the way that my setup is, my paths are going to be a little bit different from yours. So whenever we call Rosetta, it's gonna look a little bit different, um, but still use the paths that, um, the path to Rosetta that's available to you. Um, uh, just FYI, if there's any confusion about that, please uh, let us know. Um, the other thing is that we do open uh, PyMole a little bit. Um, I just wanna let you know that I can't do that on my current setup. Um, so if you want to still open PyMole on your screen, um, please do. That's encouraged. I just want to let you know that I can't do that here. Okay, so without further ado, let's get going. So I just ran a PWD, so I'm currently in um, my version of the Milo Lab Workshop directory. Um, and when I LS this, um, we see ligand docking. So we're going to CD into ligand docking. And we're going to LS. I always LS after every time I change directory. Um, we're going to be in this um, one underscore vanilla docking. We're just going to be doing um, vanilla, meaning just the standard protein ligand docking um, protocol. OK. So the first step that we're going to do um, is do some protein prep. So if we CD into this directory, um, it's currently empty. OK, so what we, uh, the first thing that we're going to have to do um, is run what we call a clean PDB script. Um, so this is um, this is simply a Python script, um, which I denote from the 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 first um, the command here is to run Python, um, and then I'm going to call within Rosetta. So my Rosetta um, path looks like this. Um, and then within here, now that I'm in the main. Um, Rosetta directory here. We have our demos documentation, documentation main tools. So I'm going to go into this tools directory, our protein tools, um, scripts, clean PDB, and then 3PBLA. So what this means, I think I need to, excuse me, I'm sorry. I think I need to designate Python 2.7 here. Sorry about that. Um, so what this is saying is that. Um, I want PDB ID 3PBL and I want chain A. Um, what this script actually does is if it doesn't already exist as 3PBL.pdb um, in your current directory, it will go and it will grab that from uh, the PDB. So that's what this is going to be doing. Um, so, okay, awesome. Uh, it went to rcsb.org and it picked up this PDB file. Um, and this is some output. This is the FASTA file output. So now if we ls, we now have. 3PBL underscore A, which means the chain, um, dot PDB, and also its corresponding FASTA file. Great. Um, so the way that we have this set up, we're going to actually be copying this cleaned PDB file, this 3PBL underscore A dot PDB. Um, we're going to copy that into the docking directory, just like that. Um, and then we're going to CD um, backwards really quickly. Um, up a directory and into the ligand prep. Okay, so if we ls in here, um, we already have um, this SDF file of our ligand. Um, so if I open this up real quick, um, this is simply just, uh, um, this is standard SDF file notation, um, has some information on here. Um, and this was taken straight from, um, uh, I believe, the PDB. Um, also note that this is without hydrogens in its current state. Okay, so um, uh, this is typically, in your tutorial, you would be opening this up in PyMol, um, both this file and also the, the confirmers file. So I'm just going to open that as a text file real quick, um, uh, just to show you guys very quickly what we mean by confirmer files. Um, so we've generated this. Um, notice we've add the hydrogen, added the hydrogens now. Um, just a note that um, 
files that are typically downloaded from the PDB, whether it's protein or ligands, they don't have the hydrogens. Um, that's for a couple reasons. One is just kind of to save space. Um, there are a lot of lines taken up, but we also um, were able to you know, define which atoms uh, have hydrogens and how many they have, but also these things aren't experimentally uh, observed. Um, we don't know where hydrogens often are, so um, this is something that we just kind of fill in. Okay, so we have one model here. Um, this four dollar signs here, this designates the end of um, the first um, of one molecule um, and into another. So this file is very long. Um, we're on the third conformer now. Um, so this goes for a long time. So to get out of VI, um, you do colon Q. Logical, right? Okay, so um, now that we have um, given here our SDF file of our ligand and also the conformers file, um, what we want to do is run mole file to params. Um, as I mentioned in the, in the talk, um, this basically allows um, whatever ligand you're working with to become Rosetta readable. Um, it allows it to, um, it, it reads in um, uh, how bonds are connected. Um, and also the, the bond lengths, the bond distances, uh, gives internal coordinates, and it also will point to this conformer file, uh, which is important for Rosetta to, to figure out um, how to repack conformers. Okay, so again, um, we're gonna be doing this mole file to params um, uh, command here. Um, and so, my, again, my, my path is going to look different from you all. Um, but here we are in the Rosetta base directory. Um, and then this is located in main source scripts, Python, public, mole file to params. So if we run a dash H on this, dash H just simply means help. This will give us a nice help message, um, kind of specifying um, a couple of things here. So usage is the first line. So we have an input SDF file. We're going to be inputting the conformer file in this case. Um, and there's also information about the different options um, that are here. So again, um, we've already provided the, the command line for you, um, but if you have any questions about any others, um, please let us know. Okay, so I'm going to go in and actually run this command, how we have it set up in the tutorial. Um, so we're gonna do a dash n etq. This is simply to say, I want the name of this ligand to be etq in the output file. Um, the dash p etq, I want these files to be named etq, etq .params or whatever. Um, we're also going to say that there are conformers in one file. So we're giving that, um, that, that conformer file as input and saying that they're all in there. Um, and then we're going to actually specify that file. So if we run this. Excellent. Which new files did we get? Um, so we generated, we just generated um, all these etq files. Um, so etq.pdb is simply just, it is the first conformer in this file uh, converted to a pdb. Um, and then we converted all of the conformers um, from this sdf file into the pdb file. Um, and then this etq.params. So this is what I want to go in and look at really quickly, is this params file. So this, again, tells Rosetta everything it needs to know about this residue. Um, so its name, uh, what type it is. So in this case, it's a ligand. Um, in other cases, you could see this would be like a, a residue um, amino acid. Um, and then you have the atom names here. So you, you have an atom line, uh, similar to kind of how a PDB is set up. So um, the, the atom naming, um, what kind it is. So um, this designates um, its, its atom type. Um, and then the chain that it's on is this X, chain X. Um, and then it's partial charge. And these are rough partial charges. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that so much today. There's other ways to par um, generate partial charges, um, but we simply do it in this uh, mole file to param script. So the bond type here, this is, um, uh, how we designate the internal coordinates, how things are connected. Um, the, um, I'm sorry, these are the internal coordinates down here. <laughs> the I-core internal, these are the in internal coordinates. So um, how these different atoms are connected. Um, and these represent the um, uh, different aspects of that. So some of the dihedral angles between them, 
Um, and then this is the bond length between um, the different atoms. So this very last line here points to the conformer file, um, the PDB version of the conformer file, um, so that it can call in during the high resolution repacking stages, um, it knows where to go in and find those conformers. Okay, so that's our params file overview. Um, uh, it says here you may encounter a warning about number of residues. Um, that's totally fine. Um, again, this was generated on, on um, uh, here and it's, it's totally normal, so don't worry about it. Um, we've already looked at the etq.params file. Um, look for that PDB Rotomers property um, in the last line. So we're going to end up, uh, we're going to copy all of these etq files into the docking directory where we already have a couple other things like our, um, our clean PDB um, starting crystal structure and a, and a couple other things I'll get into in just a second. Okay, so we copied those things over there. Now let's actually go to the docking directory. And now we have everything we need to actually run docking. Um, first, we actually need to um, concatenate um, the clean PDB and the, um, the starting ligand here. So we're going to do that simply with a cat command, so 3ppl underscore a dot pdb, um, etq dot pdb, and then we're going to output this, we're going to dump this into what we call 3ppa underscore a underscore etq dot pdb. So why are we doing this? Um, because we, this only has the, excuse me, um, this has the, the protein coordinates, this is our ligand coordinates, um, and we want these um, to be in the same file. Um, for when we actually run the docking. So now when we open up um, this newly concatenated file, we have all of the protein residues. And then if I skip down to the end, we also have um, the ETQ coordinates here and on chain X. Okay. Uh, and I would highly encourage you to look at that in PyMol. Um, you'll see that it's already in the binding pocket I mentioned in the um, in the presentation that we don't use the start from mover because this is already in the binding pocket. Um, so you can see that here. Um, I would highly encourage you to look at all of these inputs in PyMol or whatever your graphic interface is. Um, it's incredibly helpful. Okay, so we have a couple other things in this directory here um, besides just some uh, structure files. Um, so we have this doc.xml um, and we also have this options.txt file, which I'll get into in just a second. Um, but let's first look at this doc.xml file. Um, so this is exactly the same file that I used in the video about the, um, in the ligand docking presentation. Um, and this tells Rosetta, um, it's, it's a Ros Rosetta scripts uh, file. Um, and this gives all the information about the protocol that you're gonna be running. Um, and we've already gone into this, um, so I'm not gonna gonna um, make you guys listen to me talk about it all over again. Um, but simply here, we have under the mover section, we have our transform, we have our high res docker, we have our final minimizer, and our interface score calculator. Um, and all these things are defined um, respectively throughout the XML. So that's how we're actually telling Rosetta what to do. Um, so now to actually run the docking study, what we're going to do is um, actually first let's look at this options.txt file, um, which gives the flags that we want to do. So we're saying, okay, our input file, our in file S, um, is our concatenated version of the protein ligand complex. Um, we have to designate this params file, this etq.params file that we generated just a moment ago. Um, this is the only way that Rosetta knows how to read in the etq coordinates that are given in that PDB. Here are some um, uh, flags for uh, repacking. Um, so this EX1, EX2, these are simply where we define which, um, which side chains we, um, chi angles that we actually want to be sampling. Um, these are fairly standard. Um, I wouldn't do too much with these. Um, these have been um, kind of benchmarked by developers. Um, the reason we, we do some of these things is because there's so much sampling to be done on both the ligand and the protein side. Um, some of these things, just like ignore ligand chi's, is to um, uh, ignore some of the um, uh, specifically um, the hydrogens and the angles there. Um, 
uh, to reduce sampling. So we're also saying in this script, the parser protocol, okay, we're gonna be using the doc XML, which is located in this directory that we just opened and looked at. This override is saying, okay, if there's any output files that I'm gonna be writing in, um, I want to overwrite the pre-existing ones. Um, and then um, mm -hmm. this is something that, um, that you won't be, uh, have to worry about. This is something that the, the developers do. Um, but this is to tell Rosetta that the score function that they're using is actually going to be an older version. Um, this is a long story, um, but this is um, something that you're going to be doing in any uh, docking study that you would do. Um, we're going to restore back to um, an older version, this pre tolaris 2013 behavior. Okay, so that's a run through of um, both the XML and the options file. So you'll see in your... Um, um, in your protocol that we are going to now be running this. Um, so it is relatively quick. You'll see an instruct of five. We're only generating five outputs, which is not something that you would do um, in an actual docking protocol, but because time, uh, we're gonna do that here. So um, again, my path to Rosetta is different, um, but we're gonna go into main source bin and we're gonna be running Rosetta scripts. Okay. And then we're gonna be calling this options.txt file, and then we're gonna be designating an instruct of five. And this will only take just a, just a minute or so. Um, I mentioned in an earlier video, if, if you guys saw that um, about um, Rosetta IO, um, that you can actually uh, dump this um, this terminal output into a file called a log file or a tracer. Um, and I would highly recommend that, um, especially when you're doing your first runs, just to have a better understanding of what's going on. Look, we're already done. We've already generated five models. Um, awesome. Don't have to ramble too much. Um, but no, seriously, um, the tracer is, is really nice to understand um, what's actually going on under the hood a little bit um, in, in some of the, um, what you're building, um, you know, some of the data inputs, the database inputs, um, what's being the packer tests for, for repacking. Um, these are all incredibly helpful and will help familiarize you um, better with the protocol. Okay, so um, again, I don't have, um, I can't access PyMol from my current setup, but I highly encourage you guys um, to um, look at each of these outputs um, and see what we have. So in this run, we generated those five outputs, our instruct of five, so it goes out to underscore 0005.pdb. Um, excuse me, we also generated the score.sc file. Um, this set no wrap command is really nice um, in Vim. So um, you can see kind of where each of these scores, um, each of these score terms um, and how, um, and what that looks like. So I'm gonna to go to the end here really quickly. Um, so a couple of terms that I typically look at um, are this, um, so the ligand RMS no super X and ligand RMS with super X, so the no super X. Um, sorry, the names are a little bit cumbersome, um, but this is without superimposition. So this is the RMS D value that you would typically be looking at. Um, the difference between um, the ligand RMS with super X on the other hand would be if you superimpose the ligand structure onto the native that we specified. Um, and you're pretty much looking at um, the change in the internal ligand conformer um, geometry and how close that is to, to the specified native. Okay, so the other term, um, score term that we typically look at is the interface delta X. So this is, um, uh, pretty, the ligand specific um, uh, score, score term that we look at. And it's what I described in the earlier presentation, the Rosetta ligand presentation, um, where we're looking at the bound versus separated, um, bound versus unbound uh, scores and take the difference. So this is typically the score metric that we look at. So when we generate score versus RMSD plots, we're looking at the interface delta X in this ligand RMS no super X, the non superimposed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we quit out of that. Um, I'm not going to make you guys generate tons and tons of models. Um, so we've already done that. So if we want to go and look at those, um, we'll just CD 
um, back really quickly into this answers directory um, and then the docking directory from here. So the ligand prep and protein prep um, has the, um, the answers um, uh, in case you had trouble generating files in previous steps. So if we cd into the stocking directory here, um, we have this out directory um, where we've stored all 500 of the outputs um, for you guys to, to go and, and do a, a model analysis for. Okay, so we're still in the docking directory. Um, I just exited out of the, out of the ls, um, out of the out directory, excuse me. Okay, so we have a couple things for you guys to do. Um, a couple notes here um, to identify what I just walked through was the, um, I skipped over the total score. You guys have likely already seen this, um, but the interface delta x score is what we typically use in the ligand world. Um, something to look at and to keep an eye on is this transform accept, accept ratio. And this is a good thing to do um, to figure out how well you're sampling um, and uh, see if you're actually ever accepting moves. This is important. Um, to look if um, maybe where you're looking, it's, it's too small for the ligand. Um, maybe it just doesn't fit and it's not, um, it's not accepting very many moves. Um, okay, so we come down here um, to step 10 um, in your protocol. Um, we have a visualized ligand script. Um, again, I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, because I don't have PyMole, but you should be able to follow that um, pretty easily. Um, so the analysis script um, right here, we've already, let's CD into the out directory real quick. Again, this is the one where we have those 500 models. Um, we also have our output score file here. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do a couple things really quickly. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, so we made this score versus RMSD CSV file. This is just a comma separated value file, um, uh, pretty standard um, uh, data sheet format. Um, so we want to look at these score versus RMSD values. Um, and the way that we do that, we've written a short bash script to do this. Um, so I'm going to call it that really quickly. Um, so this is actually going back a couple directories for me. Um, into the, um, I'm sorry about this, into the scripts directory and then extract scores.bash. Um, and then the only input that it requires is the score.sc. Um, so this automatically output a CSV file. You can go in and read that script and easily edit it to what you wanna look at, um, simple bash scripting. But this gave us the, the pose um, identifier, the, the description in the last column of the score file, it gave us our total score, it gave us our interface delta x score, and it also gave us that RMSD, that ligand RMS no super x. So this output um, is, is really nice to look, um, and you can put this into Excel um, if you're not familiar with, um, with things like awk um, on the command line. Um, and this can give you a nice score versus RMSD plot. Um, uh, this is nice and inconvenient for you all. So a typical um, analysis that we do is taking the lowest scoring structure um, and then we calculate RMSDs to that structure. Um, we consider that the native um, and then we do score versus RMSDs to that. Um, so we've laid this out for you guys in the following command. So if we go up one directory again, now we're in the docking directory. Um, we're gonna do this um, um, sort NK48, which means we're going to sort by the 48th column. Um, I know that this is the interface score, um, interface delta X column. Um, and so that's what we're using to, um, to sort by. And then I'm going to plug this into an awk command. So I want to print that out um, at that column and also the last, um, the last column, which is the description, which is the, the name of the PDB. Okay, and then head. So, okay, what did I just do here? Let's break this down just a little bit. Um, I sorted by the, um, I, I know that column 48 is the interface delta x score. 
Um, so that's what this is right here. Um, we're sorting by this value, so we get the lowest best scoring models up at the top. Um, and then I just wanted to print out those respective columns. Um, so I printed out the 48, which gives us the interface delta x, and then I printed out the very last column, um, which if you saw in the score file was actually the name of the pose um, corresponding to that particular interface score. Okay, so from this I was able to extract out, look at this top line and see which pose has the um, best scoring uh, interface delta x. So then that's what we're going to be using um, for our comparison to, to native, which we're now designating as the lowest scoring RMSD, um, or the lowest scoring interface uh, structure. So if we look now, I made an XML file for us to, to go off of. Um, all of this is very similar. Um, we're just gonna be rescoring um, uh, and getting RMSD values in comparison um, to that lowest scoring model, which I've put in here um, was that um, 211.pdb that we just saw was the best scoring um, right here. So now that we have the model that corresponds to the best scoring pose, um, what we want to do is calculate the RMSD of all of our structures with respect to that best scoring pose. Um, so the way that we did this, um, the way that we're going to do this, I've written an XML for you guys here called calculate RMSD to best model.xml. So if we take a look at this, um, it says most of the same things that we did earlier. We're not doing these dockings to the transform movers, high res, um, uh, um, and final minimizer. Um, we're not going to be doing any of those. We're simply just going to be scoring so we can get an RMSD. Um, and our native now is this lowest scoring pose. Um, so we're going to run this with this options file that I've named the same thing except for .xml, .options. Um, and what I've done here is um, designate in file L, um, which means I'm giving, it, I'm giving it a list of structures that I want to score with respect to that as the native. Again, I need to specify the params file. Um, this is the protocol that we're going to be using is this .xml. Um, and then I, I don't want to re-output all of the structures. We're simply just scoring them, so it would be very redundant. Um, I do want a score file, though, which I'm going to put in, um, in call out. Um, RMSD to best model .sc. Again, we're going to score using this, so everything is the same as before. So the only thing that we're really changing is the RMSD. Um, so that the way we're going to run this is similar to what we did um, with the actual docking run itself. Um, I should say that if you saw in the, the options file here, I'm using this in file L option, um, which is list of outputs. Um, this file simply looks like this. Um, all I did was ls um, out star dot pdb um, to get that file name. Um, that's simple bash, and I just dumped that out to this file called list of outputs, um, and that's in your protocol. So what I'm going to do is um, I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. I've already made the score file for you guys, um, but you have the path in there. Um, you're going to run Rosetta scripts again using that XML and using the options. Um, in this calculate RMSC to best model dot options. So if we CD into out, the file that, um, that I made here was the um, RMSC to best model dot SC. So if we go and we, um, we run that bash script um, to extract the scores, RMSC to best model, now we have, um, a, similarly to what we did before, um, we have the model number, the model name, uh, the total score, um, the delta x score, interface delta x score, and the RMSD. So just to check, um, we did run, um, we did want the RMSD to our best scoring, which was this uh, 211. Notice that that is um, a zero RMSD, which is exactly what we would expect. Um, we're comparing it to itself. So, um, so that's good that we did compare to the same thing. So then you would make a score versus RMSD plot um, to each of um, each of your score files, um, including this RMSD to um, to the best scoring model. Um, and you can do these have already been made for you. Those uh, PNG files you can open them up um, and whatever works for you. I'm not able to open these up in my current setup, um, but you guys can go in and look at those and ask any questions that you have. Um, so that is um, one way that we go through and we analyze these things. Again, we also do cluster analysis, which is very useful if you see multiple 
um, uh, wells. Um, be careful, uh, two structures that have the same RMSD, they're not necessarily uh, similar. You can think of it as um, you, it's, it's respective to a specific native. So if you want to think about this simply in translational space, um, if you have an RMSD of just simply pushing one thing six angstroms over one way and six angstroms over the other way, you still have um, a six angstrom RMSD to your native, um, but they're totally different. So be careful about that. Um, but you can do some cluster analysis um, using those types of plots. Um, we also have several um, along the same lines of what we just did and a couple other analysis scripts um, and also some uh, pymol, um, uh, more pymol examples for you all to look at. Okay, so with that, um, I hope you guys uh, learned how to do this, um, at least some basic setups. Um, please feel free to ask questions. Um, I know I'm not used to doing this on a terminal uh, and also recording at the same time, so um, please let me know if there's anything that I can clear up for you guys. Um, just simply let me know. All right, thanks guys. Have a good time.